Today it's all about a delicious recipe that's really fun to make. You're going to like this one. Today I'm going to be making some breadsticks. Now here's the thing. I was thinking about doing breadsticks recipe and I thought, what's the competition doing? Got to think about what other folks are doing. I have to think about what sells and what doesn't and what people are interested in. That's what I'm wanting to target. I see that a lot of folks like breadsticks and I see there's a little niche that's kind of going missed and I'm going to fill it, okay? As I normally do, I like to develop recipes and today what we're going to do is we're going to put together a wonderful breadstick recipe. Now there's different kinds of breadsticks. I've noticed that some restaurant chains sell what they call a breadstick and it basically is a small loaf of bread. Okay. Breadsticks, what I grew up knowing, were these hard, crunchy little things about the diameter of my finger and uh, often covered with seeds of some kind, sesame seeds or poppy seeds, something like that. Okay, breadsticks of my childhood. That's sort of the Italian version, what they call grissini. Um, so today we're going to be making both. All right, I want to approach both sides of this, but I'm going to flavor it up in a way that maybe you've never considered. This is going to be breadsticks. It's going to be a very special recipe. And folks, I think you're really going to enjoy this one. Let's get in the kitchen and let me show you how I make breadsticks. Before we go though, one thing I want to mention. Uh, my website, that's where you're going to find the written recipe for this. And uh, yeah, I do charge for them. Not a big deal. Let me show you why. Uh, when you get one of my recipes, they're designed to be printed out if you want to do that. They're PDF format. Here you go. They come excellent. You get some pictures, very clear, clean uh, directions. The way the uh, ingredients are written out is fantastic. And there's pictures on what it should look like. All right. So you get the real thing when you get one of my recipes, not some little, you know, two by three block of information in the corner of your paper that's filled up with advertisements. <laughs> no, these are actually designed for you to keep and to be able to make notes in and stuff like that. So I've got some really cool recipes there. And if you would check that out when you're done watching this, let's take a look at this recipe. Come on, let's go. Simple, basic ingredients when it comes to bread. What do you do with it? That's the big question, and that's what all the flavors are about. Let's look at the bread first. We've got flour, salt, yeast, sugar, and water. Basic bread recipe, nothing out of the ordinary here, okay? Over here, though, we're gonna be adding in some other stuff. We're gonna be using some olive oil in this. We're going to use some tarragon and basil and oregano and rosemary and also some garlic. And to top it off afterwards, in addition to the salt that the dough is made with, we may be sprinkling some salt right over the top to give it that little extra kick. There we go. Those are our ingredients. Let's get into the make. We make this with these included, okay? To get this recipe started, I need to do one thing. I need to take my rosemary, which are these large leaves that are kind of hard and woody. They don't work well in recipes like that. So I like to take them, put them in a mortar and pestle, uh, excuse me, a mortar and pestle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a carpenter, so sometimes the, the terminology gets messed up. Anyway, put it in here, grind it down into a nice little powder, and we're going to use that in the dough. Now I need to put my flour into this bowl and I'm going to mix in all of these other ingredients. Only one thing I'm going to caution you about, when you're putting in your yeast, don't put the salt in at the exact same time. Stir the yeast in and then put the salt in and stir it in. And I like to mix all of this stuff in my flour prior to making my dough. I've got all of my ingredients in there. It's just kneading and I want to let it knead for about five or six minutes. Not a big deal. After that, we're gonna put it down into a glass bowl to rise it in. Now let me mention rising dough. You can do it in glass, ceramic, plastic, wood bowls. Metal, 
does not get along well with yeast, okay? It, it will actually kill some of the activity of the yeast. So don't use a metal bowl when you're rising. Stick with something else. I like to use a glass bowl with another glass bowl on top and it allows me to see what's going on while keeping my dough moist. Getting ready to put my dough down in my rising bowl. And as I mentioned, I use a glass bowl over the top and it gives me a nice little set for rising my dough. And I've been doing it this way for years. It seems to work. Uh, another thing is you just place this in a warm area. Now I have a standing pilot on my stove, so I'm lucky I get to put it right on top of that. But if you don't, then you know, other warm areas on top of the refrigerator often works well. Before I put my dough in here, I wanna coat it with a little olive oil. Looks like the dough has risen up. Now I'm gonna give it about, oh, another five or 10 minutes. It's gonna rise just a little bit more. I'll punch it down, give it a little bit of kneading just in your hand. You don't have to put it on the floured board or anything. And after you roll it under itself a few times, throw it back down in here, rise it a second time. And then after that, we're gonna get on to making our breadsticks. Really neat. You can see down here where there's a lot of air pockets and stuff going on. And that's just the same thing that's going on inside of the dough. And it's a beautiful thing. So we give it plenty of time and it will turn into something special for us. I have risen my dough twice now. I have this beautiful, shiny, elastic dough. And what we can do here is just break off or, or pinch off little amounts, just a little round ball. Uh, and then we're gonna roll it out into a cylinder. Now, remember, you can make this whatever diameter you want, but we're gonna rise those little uh, cylinders of dough. We're gonna melt them rise up a bit so they're gonna get slightly larger. Also, the ones that are gonna be more like loaves, well, those also, they're gonna rise up too, and they have a little longer rise time to them, and it's a little more of a bread-like product. So, just depending on which product you're looking at, depends on how much of that you're going to tear off at once. I have rolled some of my dough into these small, thin little cylinders and laid them out on a sheet. Now, if you want, you can cook them up just like this, 400 degrees in the oven. It only takes about 15 minutes. If you want to brown them lightly, do so, but don't make them dark brown, okay? Keep them light brown. Now, on this, if you want also, you can salt these. Uh, hit them with a little water first and salt them, or you can hit them with some olive oil and salt them. The olive oil will give it a very special flavor. It's best to spray that on if you can. If you brush it on, you need to use a very gentle brush, okay? So the first ones hit the oven as the other ones are rising. I'm going to give those about 15 minutes and we'll give them a good look at. If they're ready to come out, we'll pull them out. We're looking for a light golden brown with some slight medium browning on it. Do need to mention that was 400 degrees on our oven. The quantity of everything that we have used today, that starts with our flour back here. That was four and a half cups of flour. Now folks, if you want a conversion for that, that comes to one pound, six ounces, or 610 grams. One and a half cups of water, and you're gonna want warm water for this. Not boiling hot, but hot to the touch without burning you. I've got some salt down here, that's two teaspoons of salt. The salt measures out at eight grams of salt. The yeast, that is a total of two packages of yeast. Now on that, it comes to a total of 14 grams if you're weighing it out. On our sugar, a total of two tablespoons of sugar. And the way that weighs out on that is gonna be 24 grams. So if you're doing things by measurement, now you have your weights to work with. Now on these over here, I don't do weight measurements because they're such small amounts, it's hard to get any accurate measurements without going down to milligrams. I'm not gonna mess with that. So what we have is a teaspoon of tarragon, a teaspoon of basil, a half a teaspoon of oregano, a half a teaspoon of rosemary, and make sure if it's dried uh, leaves like this whole that you rub them down so you have a nice powdered rosemary. And then garlic, one teaspoon on the garlic. As far as how much salt, go ahead and sprinkle the salt on to your taste on the outside of those breadsticks if you would like to do that. 
olive oil you can brush that on the outside of those breadsticks as you like also it works very well inside the dough feel free to use anywhere from a couple of tablespoons up to a quarter of a cup in the dough itself that's your recipe now let's look at these beautiful breadsticks my breadsticks have just come out of the oven there's the bottom they have a lovely, very, very light golden color to them. These are beautiful breadsticks, okay? And this is exactly what I was going for. A nice, crispy, crunchy, long, rigid, beautiful breadstick. Uh, so this is, this is a really cool item. Uh, goes well with a meal. Looks beautiful on the table. Very classy uh, item. Enjoy this recipe. I'm sure you're going to have a good time with it. Right now, the big breadsticks are in the oven. I have the timer set for them. The little ones here, they are out and cooling down real nice. A couple of them, I decided to have a little fun with. As you can see, beautiful breadsticks. It's a great recipe. Tastes good too. I can't wait to dig in, yummy. These came out a little bit flat, and that's because I got them in the oven late, uh, about 10 minutes late. Had I got them in 10 minutes earlier, they would have been a little higher and a little less wide. It would have been a, a little nicer shape. These came out okay, though. They make great sandwich loaves, but I wanted to show you something. Open this guy up. Now, let's look in there. Let's look at the crumb on that. The crumb is the, uh, the detail the detail in the crust right there and that's what we're looking or talking about when we say crumb and we're looking at how big the air pockets are or how small and even they are and different variations thereof and this has nice big open ones and it's a good quality uh, recipe for something just like this so for goodness sake please please enjoy this recipe you're gonna have a good time with it and the flavor is incredible now, I've been sitting here enjoying these. They're so good. And of course, I cut this one open. Mm. The flavor is a little more full in the bread rather than the breadsticks. It's really nice. It probably has something to do with retained moisture, right? More of that than anything else. The breadsticks are delicious. The flavor of the herbs and the garlic is light throughout. And the same on the bread. It's good. It's not pungent, overwhelming, or it won't push you back. It's good flavor. This is a really good recipe, and it's one you're going to enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please look in the description box down underneath this video. It's going to have some links in it and some information there for you please take a look at that take a look at the rest of my channel texas cooking today lots of recipes and if you haven't subscribed well please do and please have a good day bye bye mm.